Hello, my wildlings, and welcome back to Turnabout in the Fast Lane. Uh, it's been a while since I've uploaded anything, like, at all. Uh, there's a few reasons for that. Mostly, I, I just got into a bit of a depressive slump for a little while, honestly. Uh, I wasn't doing too well. Um, but I, I'm doing better now. Uh, things have improved. I've addressed some of those issues. Uh, and uh, I'm trying to get back into it. Uh, I, I've fallen off the horse a bit and I'm trying to get back on it. Uh, hopefully uh, things can start uploading again a bit more regularly. And uh, I thank you all for your patience. I very much appreciate that. Uh, but anyway, in the last episode, if I remember correctly, it's been a while, we were talking to Priscilla here, uh, getting her version of events. But there was a little bit of a problem with this particular comment. Uh, the, she couldn't see the driver clearly, but the camera surely saw what her eyes could not. Did it though? Because I'm looking at it here. Shows Flash's car hitting the victim. The driver is a sloth, though unidentifiable. Nobody else can be seen. So let's just present this. Attendez! I don't know how that's supposed to be pronounced, but okay. This entire testimony is just plain wrong. Take a look at this. You'll see what I mean. The footage? How so? The witness couldn't see the driver and so couldn't confirm it was my client. Then she said the footage could confirm it where her eyes failed. But you can't see my client anywhere in that footage either. Oh, what does this mean? The witness was brought out onto the stand to confirm if the driver was my client or not. And she can't do that. All she can do is tell us the crime happened at all. The same with the camera. You cannot see Flash anywhere. And if you cannot see my client, there is no indication that he that he was at the scene of the crime at all. Ah, I concede to the point, Fraulein. Yes, score. Isn't there something else also missing from that footage, Athena? Huh? What's this? Would the defense like to share his opinion? Huh? missing from that footage. The witness, of course. Witness, why are you not seen in the footage if you were at the site during the murder? Uh, oh! Um... A blind spot. Yes, I... are speaking a lot faster suddenly. Interesting. I... mean... I... was... In a blind spot. A blind spot? So the camera couldn't see you? Oh, yes, it seems plausible to me. Back at home, my security system has a blind spot right where my safe is. It's so that criminals think that they can get away with it. But little do they know that my safe is in fact a mimic, and eats them, and I get to then consume the leftovers. It really does help me save on groceries. No small bother, really. A home security system that doesn't even watch over the thing robbers would want. Seriously? Hmm? What's the matter? We, uh, have no comment, Your Honor. The judge's security issue aside, it sh just shows why the witness wasn't on the tape. So she was off to the side in the dark where the camera could not see. But that brings us back to how she could see the driver. How she could not see the driver of the car. And the fact remains that if you cannot see him at the scene of the crime, and with Phoenix's assertion that he was unconscious at the time, we cannot rule out a third party being the driver. Uh, 
what? Well, considering the defendant has... The, the defendant being at the scene is still not for certain. But despite that, he remains the likeliest candidate. But, but, but you can't see him in the car. True, at least not the face. But look at the footage again. Do you notice something? Huh? Look through the tinted window. Squint as hard as you can manage. The windows are too dark on the outside to clearly see the driver for the out. Though the outline is clearly that of a sloth frau line. <gasps> ah, that, that rhymed. I should use that as a lyric. Yes, I saw the same thing. His outline as he ran over Daisy. But that could just be a trick of the light, perhaps. Wouldn't that be a strange coincidence, sir, forehead? While it could be convenient, I do not believe it is such a trick. It is too distinct. But as long as we can't see the driver's face, that isn't confirmed. I am afraid I must agree with the prosecution. The evidence against the defendant is heavy, to say the least. Ah, uh, we're on thin ice here. We need to prove that that driver was a different person. But how? Only the judge's doubts as to the driver's identity is saving us. And it's fading fast. If you wish to eliminate the remaining answers of doubt, our judge, another witness can eliminate it. Maybe another witness? Oh, I'm pretty sure I know who this is going to be. Well, don't keep us in suspense. Oh boy, I'm going to have to remember his voice. Greetings, one and all. This performance has been a joy so far. I made sure to rehearse. Yeah, I think that sounds about right. Who is this fellow? Witness, name and occupation for the record. Maurice Upster, the one, the only, a star actor in the making. An actor, huh? Indeed, my dear. How delightful to see you again. As it was scripted to be, of course. <laughs> and since this murder mystery is reaching its conclusion, I shall usher in the final act. Well then, er, uh, upster, let's not keep the audience waiting. Tell us exactly what you saw the night of the murder. Of course. Let us make this finale a one to remember. Witness testimony. The grand finale. I was returning home from a rehearsal, walking along the empty street, and then I heard a dreadful noise, tires screeching along the road, and then BAM! Out comes the car. In it, the face of Flash Slothball. It was a fright, to be sure. The car was erratic, going beyond the speed limit. And then it was gone, bringing forth death onto an innocent car. Ah, so you saw the culprit before they reached the scene. This is just the confirmation we needed. And it clears all remaining doubts in my mind. Yes, my safe is perfectly fine, and there is definitely nothing wrong with having a safe that eats people. Ah, I was worried. But now, now I am cleared. My conscience is perfectly fine. Uh, Cross-examination? I still have that. Oh, yes, as you suppose you rise. Uh, though this account seemed clear and concise, 
More so than Miss Tripletoe's example. As were my fault, Sir Judge. Fraulein, this may very well be the truth. All the evidence points towards it. I'm not stopping yet, Prosecutor Gavin. There's still time. Of course, I invite it. Just be prepared to face the truth, if that is indeed it. Dot, dot, dot. Cross-examination time. Well, sort of. It's end of the episode time, but cross-examination time can come in the next episode. And I'll see you all then. Goodbye, good night, and good luck.